Hello and welcome to So You Think You Know Wine, Season 6, Round 7. I'm James Chatto and for this round I'm joined by John Zabo, Michael Godell and Jules Garten. They're going to identify the wine in this decanter and we're going to award them points for accurate conclusions. We're at the Wine Academy in Toronto and we're drinking from these elegant Zolto glasses. So let's get going. John, would you pour for us, please? Delighted. Thank you, sir. You know, you put your nose in the glass for that first moment and you hope for that instant recognition, recognition and it's not there. So you have to work. Now you have to work. The word does, not, doesn't not, jump not, out into your consciousness. It's not California Chardonnay, John. <laughs> Jules, you just go down your path. Okay. Don't let Michael throw you off your game. It's a combination of orchard fruit, fruit and citrus fruit, definitely. Um, but I also think that reduction and the wood are getting in the way, so it's not extremely aromatic. It's mm -hmm. as John don't, says, don't, don't try this at home. I'm not getting a lot of wood on this wine, yeah. I'd say it's probably mostly sort of stainless in style. I'm not even detecting a lot of sort of oxidative character on the fruit. I do find the fruit fairly fresh and fa fairly forward. Right. All right, I think this is uh, an Italian wine. Southern Italy, warm climate, relatively neutral grape with a lot of mineral. I'm thinking Campania, I'm thinking uh, Fiano or Greco. And I know, I know I've gone far out onto the branch here, but what the hell? Michael's in the lead anyhow, and he's still <laughs> perplexed, I know that. Extremely perplexed. I, will, I won't go there with you. I, I can't see this being Southern Italian wine. It's just... There you have it. Fiano di Avellino, 2014, Italy, Campania, uh, price. Pretty good. Uh, I'm going to say twenty-five ninety-five. Okay. You've nailed your colors to the mast. <laughs> Let's see. Michael, what about you? Nobody's going down that road. Uh, I think it's from Canada. I'm d going back and forth between Ontario and BC, but I think it's Ontario. And... I still think it is. I still think it's Ontario Chardonnay, and I think it's from. I think it's from the. I'm just going to say Niagara Peninsula, and I'm going to say 1995. That's the year or the price. And, sorry, the year I'm going to give you is 2014, and it's 1995. Jules, what about you? Well, as much as it pains me to ever agree with Mr. Zabo over here, I, I am, I taking, a, I I am taking a little bit to Italy with this wine. Um, the thing that really defines this wine for me is I get apples, 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 and then I get a bit of bitterness. Um, there's definitely a little bit of elevated sort of uh, mineral aspect to the wine, though I do think it's kind of youthful. Um, but I'm not in the south. I'm a little bit more up in the north. Uh, there's a fair amount of skin color. Uh, uh, or color to the wine, which you know leads me to possible again revisiting Pinot Grigio, or uh, could be maybe a, a Garganega from Suave. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna lock it in at uh, I think this wine is from 2014. I think it's Italian. Would they give this Pinot Grigio twice? Don't mm. game the system. Don't Just go system. with what's in the glass, Jules. Come on. Uh, I'm going to say that it's a. Uh, <laughs> uh, I'll say a Suave, Carganega from Italy, from the Veneto region, 2014. Price point, I'm going to say uh, 1895. Okay. So that was a bold guess, I have to say. We have Northern Italy, Southern Italy, and Niagara. Let's see what we find. Let's identify the wine now. Oh! Well. Well, come on. Are you serious? <laughs> I promise Pinot Gris from Gisborne, New Zealand. 
Indeed. Where is the, where is the production <laughs> the <laughs> Macho, producer? <laughs> Macho Pinot Gris from Gisborne, New Zealand. 2015 is the year. The price is 16.95. Jules, you had Pinot Gris and then you I changed did. your mind. I did. Always well, go with your gut. <laughs> never follow John Sebo down the path. This, <laughs> in terms of scoring, this is not your finest hour, guys. So but um, John and Michael each got one point. Jules got two, so congratulations, yes. Jules. Go, Jules. Jules, Jules. Oh, my mission today is over. <laughs> well done. So, what I mean, let's talk about why why this came across as as what it came across to you guys. This is quite a big aromatic wine for Pinot Gris, is it not? Well, I mean, it's a screw cap for one, and I think that was suppressing the aromatics a little bit, a little bit of what we call reduction when uh, the fruit doesn't sing. It's a little bit more on the flinty side. Um, but what should have given it away, there's a little bit of terpene and the color, as you pointed out, that, that vague floral note that was kind of buried in there, but it was there nonetheless. A pretty rich uh, fat body, a little gram or two of residual sugar to, to soften it. It kind of makes sense, I have to say. I would not have gone to Gisborne Pinot Gris right off the top, or maybe nope. ever, yep. but... Uh, uh, well, Michael, what do you think? The terpenes that, that, that John mentioned are what sent me down into the orchard. All apples, certain aspects of Canadian Chardonnay go that route very often. I sent some wood, wasn't sure, maybe a little bit of old wood, but th that's why it sends me down that road. But Gisborne and Niagara, both kind of similar regions in a way? Uh, climatic. Climatically. We, yes. Similar enough, which is why I, sort of, yeah. someone like me cool. can be so confused. <laughs> <laughs> and Jules? Yeah, just kicking myself a little. Apples, <laughs> apples and bitterness. It's uh, usually a Pinot Gris when that happens. So you, yeah, right. I think, I think as far as the typicity of the grape shows. Yeah. I still like your Garganiga call. Come on, three boys. Three boys. <laughs> <laughs> three boys. <laughs> Well, thanks oh, very well. much, guys. Congratulations, Jules. Better luck to us next time. Yeah.